Hello everyone, this is Manohar Reddy, Department of Cyber Security, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. Today I am going to discuss about DBMS Architectural Components. DBMS Architectural Components. So in the previous sessions we have discussed about uh, different uh, types of databases, uh, different types of uh, databases, softwares, uh, different types of uh, um, database softwares, installation procedures. We are we are discussing previous sessions. So now in this uh, session we are going to discuss about the database management system architecture. So what are the architectural components that were present in the DBMS? So how we are going to uh, perform the steps in the database management system to uh, utilizing all the databases, to utilizing all the tables, to utilizing all the different data objects. So we'll see. So this is the database management system architecture. So from this, all these, uh, we are seeing uh, different types of roles, different types of users, navy users, application programmers, sophisticated users, database administrator, application interfaces, application programs, query tools, administration tools, application program object code, compiler and linker, DML queries, DDL interpreter, DML compiler and analyzer or organizer, Query Evaluation Engine, Buffer Manager, File Manager, Authorization and Integrity Manager, Transaction Manager, Data, Indices, Data Dictionary, Statistical Data. So these are all the different components that were present in the DBMS to perform their own roles. To perform their own roles. So we'll see these all the architectural components are divided into five categories actually different divided into five categories one is this is first one is users category and second one is this is the tools category and third one this is query processor category and fourth one is storage manager category and the fifth one is what disk storage category. Disk storage category. So first one is what users category. Second one is what tools category. Third one is what query processor category. And the fourth one is what storage manager category. And the fifth one is what disk storage category. So we are performing all the different types of operations like database creations, database. Uh, droppings, table creations and everything. So everything that we are creating all these in the disk storage, all this in the disk storage. So disk storage is the main component to storing all the data from the database software. So disk storage is the main component to store all the data in the database software. So this disk storage is nothing but secondary storage device secondary storage that is your hard disk that is your physical location where the data actually stored where the data actually stored like the c drive d drive e drive so those are all a disk storage you can see so what it contains actually what a disk storage contains actually so it contains data it contains indices that is nothing but indexes that indexes are maintaining records of the particular data. Indexes maintains particular records of the uh, data. So that indexes, so one index will be stored, one, one line of data, two indexes contain two line of data, and three indexes contain three line of data. So that is nothing but employee numbers contain one data, employee names contains one data, employee salaries contains one data. So those all the data is stored in the disk storage in the form of indexes in the form of indexes and data dictionary so data dictionary is nothing but that maintains all the alphabetical manner that maintains all the alphabetical manner suppose i am creating two types of databases like uh, iare and i i 
IME. Suppose I am taking IARE and IME. Those two are alphabets. First IE stands for IRE and second IE stands for IME. So IARE is the first one. So it is storing first place. And IME is the second one. It is storing second place. So the data dictionary maintains, data dictionary maintains all the alphabetical manner of the data, alphabetical manner of the data and statistical data, statistical or mathematical data. So you are going to performing like salaries, uh, salaries, percentages and everything. So it maintains all the statistical data. So this all the information is to be stored at one particular place. That particular place is called as disk storage. That particular storage is called as disk storage. So disk storage contains data along with the indexes, along with the data dictionary and along with the statistical data. So data is nothing but common data having different types and the indexes contains data with the uh, numbers, serial numbers or index numbers and data dictionary contains alphabetical order and the statistical data contains numbers like salaries, percentages and uh, commissions and everything. So this is all about disk storage contains. So disk storage component maintains all the data in the form of alphabets, in the form of numbers, in the form of uh, uh, serial numbers in the form of uh, structured and then everything right and second one is what storage manager so storage manager is going to be store all the different uh, databases to contacting with the disk storage so storage manager is a person or role to contacting the disk storage why he needs to contacting means he wants to insert the values or he wants to retrieve the values you want to insert the values or he wants to retrieve the values. So storage manager contacts to the disk storage. But storage manager contains what actually? So storage manager contains what? Buffer manager, file manager, authorization and integrity manager and transaction manager. So buffer manager, file manager, authorization and integrity manager and transaction manager. So buffer manager, so buffer manager is nothing but it allocates a memory for creating a uh, memory for uh, creating data or memory for allocating data. Uh, so he can allocate, he can create some space to store the data. So buffer manager always trying to keep the data sufficient to the performing operations. And file manager, file manager creates files, file managers allocate some space to the files. And file manager uh, can uh, delete the files if does not required. If does not required, he can delete the files and he can utilize the files where he wants to utilize. Actually, so and authorization and integrity manager. So authorization is nothing but uh, applying uh, applying authorization is nothing but uh, he can able to access that file. He can able to access the file. He does not able to access the file. So if he is authorized person. If it is authorized, then you can able to see that file. You can able to access that file. You can able to see that file. You can able to access that file. So he will manage. He will manage all the accessing and unaccessing information. Accessing and unaccessing information. And transaction manager. So transaction manager maintains all the transactions, and he can able to uh, monitor the starting transaction, processing the transaction as well as ending the transaction. In a similar way, you can say that begin the transaction, performing the transaction, and ending the transaction. Ending the transaction. So in most of the cases, we can see the ATMs, transactions, crediting and debiting transactions. So these are all the uh, transaction managers, authorization and integrity manager, file manager, and buffer manager roles will be handled by one person that is nothing but storage manager storage manager storage manager monitors and storage manager creates and storage manager maintains all the roles of this buffer manager file manager and authorization and integrity manager and a transaction manager and a query processor third one is query processor which is very very important component the query processor query processor is processing all the queries from the users to the disk storage. 
from the users to the from the users from the users from the users to the disk storage to the disk storage so query processor process the queries from users to the disk storage so how you are going to write the query how you are going to analyze the query and if you write wrong syntax of the query so how you are going to evaluate it and how if you are, if you are writing the query is valid and how you are going to show the result and who will manage all these things is in this component so that is nothing but query processor so query processor contains what application program object code application program object code which is used for interact with the application interface and a compiler and a linker so compiler compiles the query is what you are written and the linker will link that uh, commands to the next uh, queries Com uh, linker will help you to link the next questions and dml queries so data manipulation language queries like uh, select update delete insert so those queries uh, will be right here and ddl interpreter so data definition language commands and the data data definition language interprets all the commands and so these dml queries and ddl commands will be handled by this dml compiler and the organizer dml compiler and the organizer so these compilers will help you to compile your dml compiler dml queries as well as ddl queries so those will only compilation but here the query evaluation engine query evaluation engine is help you to evaluate the query evaluate the query evaluating the query is nothing but whether you have write whether you write the query is in the valid way or not whether it is valid or not if it is valid what will happen if it is not valid what i am going to show you so that is the thing the query evaluation engine will do if the right uh, the written query is valid then regarding that query related to the query the output or result will be stored the result will be displayed if it is not valid it is going to be showing the syntax that uh, you made a mistake on the query so that will see by a query evaluation engine and a query processor so query processor will help you to processing the queries how to process the query how to compile the query how to evaluate the query whether it is valid or invalid everything will check here at query processor everything will be check here at query processor and the next one tools fourth one is uh, tools so application interface is one tool application program is also one tool and the query tools like dbms softwares and administrative tools administrative tools so these are all the tools that are interacting with the query processor from the users these are all the tools interacting with the query processor to the users so users write some queries and that queries are pro processed by query processor with the help of these tools with the help of these tools that means the tools will interacting from users to the query processor such a query is written by that user and you have to process this query so like the way the tools are interacting so application interfaces like uh, to interacting with the java from the database or mysql or anything you can use as a jdbc or odbc as a application interface jdbc or odbc as a application interface that is nothing but jdbc odbc drivers acting as a interfaces to interacting with the database interacting with the database from java and application programs that were created by the users application programs that were created by the users and a query tool as a dbms as a tool and mysql as a tool and oracle as a tool so everywhere uh, you can use the tools to interacting with the users to a query processor and administrator tools administration tools so he can apply the tools to interacting with the users interacting with the databases and interacting with the, all the uh, lower levels to store the databases so he can interacting with the query processor he can interact with the storage manager he can interact with the disk storage to store all the related information or to retrieve all the information and last uh, different types of users different types of users so nav users so some of examples like tellers agents web users these are also some examples so these users use 
these tools to write some queries. So the uh, above users, application programmers write application programs. Navi users use application interfaces. Sophisticated users or analysts, you can say that, use query tools. Database administrator use administration tools. So with the help of administration tools, database administrator can create the database, can monitor the database, can analyze the database, can drop the database, can do all the activities on the database. Similarly, sophisticated users or analysts use some query tools to analyzing the uh, yeah, queries, analyzing the queries. And similarly, application programmers write application programs. Application programmers write application programs. And uh, now users or web users or tellers or agents use some application interfaces like, uh, like, like as we said previous Java, uh, Java database connectivities, Oracle database connectivities. So those are all application interfaces to interacting with the query processor, to interact with the query processor. So, so I would like to say that the users are writing this query here. The users are going to write the query at here, and that query is going to be stored in this disk storage by performing all these steps. By performing all these steps, so users use some tools to write the query, and that query is processed by this query processor, and it is storing in particular point of time storage manager, and it will be stored into the disk storage finally. Similarly, when user wants to retrieve the information from the query, like select a star from select a star from employee. So actually, the employee data is available in disk storage. Employee data is available at disk storage actually. But I just user has to write the query select a star from employee to see the list of records at this side at this side. So for this, he was using query tools as a MySQL command line pointer. So when I write this query, query processor will check this query is valid or not. Query evaluation engine will check whether this query, whether the written query is evaluated or not, whether the written query is correct or not. If it is query right, then storage manager will take the request from query processor and related that query, the data is available or not, I will check. And if it is available, if the related data is available in the disk storage, then he can get the information to the query tools, query processor and give it to the user. If the related query is data, if the data of related query is available from the disk storage, he will get the data to the query processor and shows the information on the screen. So entire this DBMS architectural component I can say that users is one important component, tools is one component, and the query process is also very important component, and the storage manager is one important component, and disk, disk storage is one important component. Among these all five components, query processor is very, very important because query processor evaluates the query, process the query from the users to database, from users to disk storage. If you write the query is valid way, then it will get back the result of your data onto the front screen, onto the front screen. So like the way you can understand this all the DBMS architectural components. So we will see what will happen, uh, what will uh, we can have the description actually. So disk storage. So disk storage is what it specifies the storage of the database. It specifies the storage of the database. So where you are going to store actually the actual location or physical location of the data, physical location of the data, it is going to be specified. And second one is what a storage manager. So it manages all the memory allocation and the deallocation of the database. It ma manages all the memory allocation and the deallocation of the database. He can create the memory, he can delete the memory or deallocate the memory. So for the uses of that query tools and third one is what query processor. So it processes all the queries that were executed on the database. It processes all the queries that were executed on the database. So on the database, the written query is valid or not and written query is processed or not that will check by query processor. And fourth one is what compiler and linker. 
compiler and linker so compiler uh, compiles the programs compiles the queries and a linker will link that object of the queries that has to be executed so whatever the queries are linked to that particular table or particular object so that will be linked to the database and displays the queries displays the result of that queries and next one query evaluation engine so it processes the queries it processes the queries and evaluated whether the query is valid or invalid whether the query is valid or invalid the query evaluation engine evaluates and next one ddl interpreter so ddl interpreter is what it processes all the ddl queries so data definition languages queries and dml compilers also dml compilers compiles the dml queries like data manipulation language queries and in the database so it compiles it compiles or interprets dml and ddl comments so dml stands for what dml stands for data manipulation language data manipulation language and ddl stands for what data definition language data definition language so these two queries dml queries as well as ddl queries that will interpret with the ddl interpreter it will compile with the dml compiler so dml compiler compiles all these dml queries and interprets with the ddl interpreter interpret with the ddl interpreter and next application program object code so it contains all the instructional code it contains all the instructional code that to execute on the database so actually what it actually contains the data contains what actually code so that instructional code to execute on the database so these are all the important architectural components to analyze the database so how we are going to create the database and where uh, the database database is created and where the tables are are uh, retrieved from disk storage so these are all dbms architectural components and uh, next uh, one is dbms architecture one tier two tier three tier so dbms client server architecture also we can say that so dbms client server architecture dbms client server architecture so in this architecture what we'll say actually so dbms is a uh, design dbms design actually depends upon its architecture so how we are having the architectural view so based on that architectural view we are going to de design so the basic client server architecture is used to deal with a large number of pieces so why we are designing this dbms in client server mode means to interacting with the large number of pieces to interact with the large number of systems or large number of pieces so one to one system is not sufficient right so to interact with the multiple systems to interact with the one to uh, large number of systems we can use this client server architecture we can use this client server architecture so web servers database servers and other components that are connected with the network so these are all we can uh, connected with the database to all these uh, types of pieces web servers database servers we can use to design in client server mode we can use this design to client server mode so dbms architecture depends upon how users are connected to the database to get the request done to get the request done so so the main purpose to having this client server architecture is what to interacting with the multiple servers to interacting with the multiple servers so dbms architecture contains what first one tier architecture two tier architecture and three tier architecture so dbms one tier architecture it doesn't have any intermediate roles or intermediate bridges so directly this is one client this is one client and this is one database so there is no interaction there is no interaction for all there is no intermediate person there is no intermediate there is no intermediate there is no intermediate person or intermediate role no required directly client is going to be contacting with the database 
database is also going to show the uh, requested data available on the database to the client. So directly client and the database is contacting to each other. So that is nothing but one tier architecture. One tier architecture. So there is no person or there is no intermediate bridges are required to contacting from client to database. And see here, in this architecture, the database is directly available to the user. The database is directly available to the user. Any changes done here will directly be done on the database. So whatever the queries we are writing on the database is directly communicated to the database and giving the result on itself. Giving the result on itself. So it doesn't provide any handy tool for end users. It doesn't provide any handy tool. It doesn't have any uh, third person or third role. So the one tier architecture is used for development of the local applications. So to creating the tables, to creating the databases, these are all the local applications. We can use this one tier architecture. So where programmers can directly communicate with the database for the quick response. So whatever the things we are, are doing on the command line uh, monitor, so that is nothing but one tier architecture. We don't want to require any handy tool or any other tool and any the other role to contacting the database. We don't want to use any uh, person or any handy tool as a third person, right? So that is nothing but one tier architecture. And the next one is what is two tier architecture. So two tier architecture is also same as basic client server architecture. Client server architecture. So this is one client. And this is one server. So client to server. But in the middle of client to server, at the client side, an application uh, is acting as a middleware or uh, acting as an intermediate person, intermediate role to communicate with the client and the server. An application is contacting, an application is contacting as a middle person, as a middleware, as an intermediate bridge to communicate this user to the database user to the database. So see here, in the two-tier architecture, applications on the client end can directly communicate with the database at the server side. So these applications, not user communicated to the database system, the applications are going to be communicated with the database system. Applications are going to be communicated with the database system. So like uh, ODBCs, JDBCs. So uh, Oracle uh, Open Database Connectivity or Oracle Database Connectivity and the JDBC, Java Database Connectivity, Java Database Connectivity. So those two are the, those two are, we can use as applications to contacting user to the database system, contacting user to the database. So see here, the user interfaces and application programs are run on the client side. So at the client side only, the, uh, those two are running. So client applications or user interfaces are running on the user side. There is nothing but client side. And the server side is responsible for to provide the functionalities like query processing and transaction management. So at the server side, what uh, based on the query that you are applied from the client side, so that query processing as well as transaction managing, transaction management. So to communicate with the database, client side application establishes a connection with the server side. So client side application is what? This one. Client side application establishes. Client side application establishes a connection between a connection between these two, connection with the server side. So server side, it is going to be establish a connection to contacting from client to server, to contacting a client to server. So this is the way you can understand the two tier architecture. In the one tier architecture, there is no intermediate person, but in the two tier architecture, you can have the applications as a secondary person. These applications establishes a connection to the server side. This establishes a connection to the server side. So applications uh, writing on the client side will interacting with the database system. So based on this, uh, uh, client side queries based on this client side uh, application queries the database server has to be responded and display the result display the result so this is the way you can understand the two tier architecture and next uh, three tier architecture three tier architecture is also a client server architecture but 
in this client server architecture client is not going to be communicated with the database directly and uh, application client is also not going to be communicated directly with the database in between them from the client side an application client is existed and the server side the application server existed client side application client is available server side application server is available but the user and the database is not communicated directly the user and the database is not communicated directly because we are having the application client on the client side we are having the application server on the server side so those two application client and the application server are contacting into each other are contacting to each other so from user side we are writing some query application client will take the query and give it to the application server i am giving this query if you have any relevant information from your database please get back, uh, please let me know so like the way it is asking you to it is asking to application server so application client interacting with the application server application server interacting with the database the database is respond to the application server and application server will gives to the response to the application client and application client is uh, giving the response to the user so like the way user gives the request to the client uh, client will give the request to the server server will give the request to the database and same way database giving the response to the server application server responds to the application client application client gives the response to the user so like the way three tier architecture three persons or three ways we can uh, establish a connection to contact in the database so see here in the three tier architecture contains another layer between client and server another layer is what this is application application is a layer so that application is layer and contains application client and application server application client and application server so in this architecture client cannot directly communicate with the server client that is nothing but user cannot directly communicate with the server the application on the client end interacts the application on the client end interacts with an application server application server which further communicates with the database system this is application server which further communicate with the database system so that's why application client can interact with the application server because application server is further communicates with the database right so that's why application client on the client side will interact with the application server and the end user has no idea about the existence of the database beyond the application server so end user has no idea end user uh, don't know uh, these two are interacting or not he just want to think like uh, i am giving the query and i am getting the result but to getting to giving the query and to getting the result in between them client and server application client on the client side application server on the server side will interacting with each other he don't know actually so that's what we are mentioning here end user has no idea about the existence of the database beyond the application server and the database also has no idea about any other user beyond the application any user beyond the application and the three tier architecture is used in case of large web applications windows applications mobile applications large applications we are using for three tier architecture three tier architecture so this is the way we can understand so one tier architecture there is no intermediate person two tier architecture we can have application as a intermediate person to communicate with the client to server and similarly three tier architecture we are having two uh, two types of bridges like application on the client application on the server so application on the client and application on the server can interacting with the user to server user to server so this is the way we can understand the architectural view of database management system architectural view of database management system let me see all uh, what we explain today see the database architectural components database architectural components whatever the architectural components we are having like disk storage trans uh, storage manager 
query processor, tools, query tools, and users. So users are writing the queries with the help of query tools, and that will be processed by the query processor and stored by store manager into the disk storage. Into the disk storage. In the same way, retrieval also the data which you are going uh, writing the query is going to validated by the query evaluation engine. If it validated, if is valid, the result will get from the disk storage, from the uh, disk storage, from the storage manager. So this is the way you can understand the main important com components are what users, tools, query processor, storage manager, and the disk storage, and uh, uh, computer uh, disk uh, and uh, database management system, client server architecture. We are having three types of uh, architectures. What is the necessity to design in the client server architecture is nothing but the users are going to communicate with the multiple servers. The users are going to communicate with the multiple servers, multiple interactions actually required. So for that purpose, we are having to design the database in uh, client server mode. We design the database in client server mode. So first one is what one tier architecture, second one is what one two tier, and third one is what three tier architecture. So in the one tier architecture, there is no intermediate person, as we said, uh, to contacting with the client to server, client client to database. We don't have any person or roles to interacting with the client to database. Just we are writing on the writing the queries on the screen, and directly we are uh, getting the result on the screen. So no need to have any handy tool. To interact with the database, and similarly, two-tier architecture. So two-tier architecture, we are having application on the client side. Application on the client side. That application is going to communicate with the user to the database management system, user to the database server. So application will take the request from user and gives to the give it to the database server and uh, get back the result from the database server to the user. Get back the result from database uh, server to the user uh, this is the two tier architecture and the three tier architecture so we are having the application client on the client side application server on the server side so there is a third person called application application can have the application client on the client side and application server on the server side so the database users cannot be uh, known uh, who will be the responsible for taking the queries and giving the result they don't know but they are having what application client on the client side application server on the server side so for that application client can interact with the server and the server can further communicate to the database so database giving the response to the server on the client the server on the application and that will gives to the application on the client so application client will gives the response to the user so this is the way we can understand the Architectural components and architectural design for the database management system. Thank you all. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.